or serious. Hayley, this is one all about EastEnders, isn't it? It is. Um, we've had villains in soaps before. We've even had serial killers, but none have been quite as disturbing as EastEnders' appalling so solicitor, Grey. Um, our years of subjecting his wife, Chantelle, to violent and psychological abuse, he brutally murdered her when he discovered she was finally planning to leave him in a moment that was so shocking to viewers, even I, as a non-EastEnders viewer, saw it on Twitter. Um, it was all part of a plan to show the awful reality of domestic abuse and the producers and writers of the show had worked closely with charities when they were writing it um, it was another moment that was especially poignant because of the COVID pandemic um, as women's aid put it two-thirds of survivors say their domestic abuse escalated during lockdown and Toby Alexander Smith who plays great joins us now uh, Toby thank you for joining us hi there thank you for having me um, it must be an honour for the moment to be nominated. Um, it was a particularly harrowing storyline. How difficult is it to act in scenarios such as that? I think um, a lot of it stemmed from the research. And like Hayley mentioned, Women's Aid were really there by our side throughout the whole of that process. Um, it's very difficult when you're seeing those kind of scenes on paper, such inhumane behaviour, how you even sort of begin to fathom making that, you know, a reality, making that believable, you know, in a scene with Jessica Plummer, who plays Chantal, it was, it was really tough. And I think a lot of it stemmed from how long it went on for. I mean, like a lot of domestic abuse stories, they can go on for years and years and years and years. And ours went on for about 18 months. And so it really was a slow burn. And we had a lot of opportunities to sort of really build that trust and that chemistry between each other, which I really think helped us sort of really throw ourselves into those scenes and obviously try and make them as believable as possible. Um, what reactions have you had that you've seen personally from the public who watched that? Um, so before that, the moment that's been nominated, it's, as I say, that was 18 months of it, mm. really sort of slowly building. And that way it was really starting to develop a lot of traction. You know, people were really responding to it and already we were getting told from Women's Aid that people are calling in and relating to the storyline relating to Chantel's situation and sort of speaking out, which was obviously amazing. But then I think because of the pandemic and how heightened those statistics were around that time, the impact was just so overwhelming. I mean, the week came out on the Friday night, I think, and that weekend it was just, like I say, really, really overwhelming for myself, for Jessica, who plays Chantel, uh, for Women's Aid. I mean, social media was just so, so loud. And it was amazing to see so many people calling out that behaviour, so many people sharing their stories, and it was giving people courage to relate to it and say, I stand with Chantel, this is my story, and I want to speak out before it's too late, before this happens to me. Um, there are reports that fans are calling for the character, Grey, um, to be axed, such as, I guess, in some ways, uh, the way that you've played him is, is so terrifying and unpleasant to watch i wish a testament to your acting skills but how do you feel about you know people finding it almost just too difficult to see him i think initially it took a while to get used to that that it's not a personal thing about me i mean obviously social media like i say can be very loud and sort of uh, when people started directing it at gray that was when I was like okay so we're doing we're doing our jobs here people are calling out this behavior this behavior is unacceptable and, and that's why we do it, for people to be able to recognise that there are people like Grey out there. It may be a father, it may be an ex-boyfriend, it may be a brother, it may be a friend. Do you know what I mean? And I think it just gave people that flat platform to recognise those behaviours. Scott, what do you think, from viewers who have seen these episodes, and particularly this moment, what, what do you want the main takeaway for it to be? Um... To, to talk, to speak, to know that there are people listening. You know, there are so many amazing specialist services out there like Women's Aid. But just to, I think it did create that real sense of union on social media um, of people just being able to talk. And I got so many messages and stories of people either sharing their stories, saying this is what's happened to them or this is currently what is happening to, happening to them. Uh, what should I do? And then from there, obviously, me and Jess can use 
the platforms that we had from doing the storyline to sort of hand them over to then to Women's Aid. And, you know, they literally told us that, you know, that storyline has gone on to save lives, which is so mind blowing when you think, you know, I'm just an actor, <laughs> you know. What was it like, Catelyn, judging that and seeing that moment? Well, well, this is one of the things that art does so well and television does so well. And so when you want things to change, the first thing you need to do is to be able to recognise something, identify something. And so being able to see a story like this, a long burning story like this, allows people to go, oh, it's not just me. I'm not crazy, particularly if you're being gaslit, kind of like... I think women particularly are very good at going, oh, I must have made a mistake or it's just the way I'm acting. If I improve my behaviour, things would get better. So being able to see it as a narrative happening to someone else allows you to identify it. And then it's about that thing that we talk about all the time, which is starting a conversation. And it's very hard to start a conversation about something as dark as this. A lot of people feel a lot of shame around it. They don't know how to say the words. You wouldn't even know how to phrase what's happening to you. And when you've got a soap with a storyline like this that is a part of a national conversation, you know, as Toby said, it starts conversations and it does start. It does save lives because that that's the intervention that people need. They need to be able to see their story on camera and go, that's me. That's what's happening to me. What do I do now? And the fact that there's always helpline advice after every episode, you know, this is this is the point where sort of, you know, that art and culture blur with help and real life and changing people's lives. And again, very somber mood in the room when we were watching it. There are two domestic abuse storylines in the soaps this year. There was one on Coronation Street at the same time. Um, and you know, no shade on Coronation Street, but this this storyline was was head and head and uh, shoulders above uh, the Coronation Street storyline. Just that scene, that moment, perfectly self-contained, astonishing performances, really powerful. Um, a, a lot of sort of shock and silence in the room after we'd watched it. And again, there was no debate; it just it just went straight through. Toby, thank you for being thank on you the show today. Time. Thank you, Toby Alexander Smith, though, who plays Grey in EastEnders. Our next moment is a bit meta. It's one of the TV moments of the year, but as seen through the lens of... 